It didn't completely dance all over Windows 11's face in this one, but it still beat it. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben Stone here in beautiful downtown Athens, switching the bits, driving the nightmare trade each and every Saturday, joined every week by the man up north, freshly burrito satiate are you do you feel satiated yeah all right cool yeah, just yeah. checking that's jordan swung and of course pedro mateus staying up late past his bedtime who can't, can't move because we're too dumb uh, collectively to figure out how to use uh vtube studio we couldn't he's make so, the uh he's, he's so he's so sweaty though it's really hot in the uk listen so we have, shut up we have master shake at home right <laughs> Uh, listen, man, Master Shake looks good. Damn, he's got some work done. It's got felt, the Botox. Man. Yeah, got, he, got, got, got some lip injections. He's got the drip going down him. I mean, it's pretty dope. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't know how to talk this week. Also, Pedro died. Uh, oh, we 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 can't afford Dana Snyder. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that oh, that would be great if we could get him on. Apparently, yeah. he's working. At, oh, no, it was it was Brack who's working as like an Amazon delivery guy now. Oh, really? Yeah, he got bit by a dog. Oh no. That's how I found out about that shit. That's messed it's up, real, man. It's real sad. Ah, well, we got a big show for you this week. Stay tuned. I want to just uh, give a quick, big, wet, sloppy shout out to everybody. Just a nice thank you for like watching, subscribing, like sharing all the interfacing Linux stuff, the videos, the website, because I was able to go to a little company called Radza. You remember that little Raspberry Pi N100 board? Ah, yeah, the, the Intel one. Yeah. yeah. Perpetually sold out. Been trying to get a hold of one. Not one month, two months. Pre-ordered, back-ordered, not available. I sent them an email. And everybody's sitting around waiting. I've been waiting, too, just trying to get one. I was like, do I want to do a pre-order? I'm like, let me just contact these guys. And I was able to show them the numbers. I'm like, hey, I got this little YouTube channel. It's been going on. Past couple of videos been getting between ten and twenty thousand views. Thanks to you a lot out there. Here's the number of digits. Here's a website, and they're like, "Don't fucking worry, Vin. We got you." Second, we get some back in. This is the sad part because if you do have a pre-order for one, they don't even have them yet. But I'm gonna get one in the mail. They're gonna send me a review kit. Nice. So we're gonna be able to do all types of stuff, and I firmly believe in sticking with the ones that brought you. So we're definitely going to do some game benchmarks on that little. F- it's going to be a good time. Plus a lot of C- other C- stuff. Cyberpunk with ray tracing, baby. We're going to try it, man. We're going to try it. Can it play? It's an x86 Raspberry Pi, man, with eight gigs of RAM. Like we're there's just a litany of torture tests to do to this thing. But yeah, bad news for anybody who has a pre-order in right now. Like they don't even have them. But again, thanks everybody. Interfacing Linux helped me out with that. Also, Jordan, I, I want to reach out to our audience because I know. Within the sound of my voice organ, there's at least one Microsoft employee I know for a fact because he's one of our patrons. He comments frequently on our YouTube yes. videos. So, yeah. hi, Katata. Maybe do old man Ven a favor and ping the appropriate department with a question related to why the absolute fuck has Bing not indexed interfacinglinux.com yet? It's just bugging me at this point. And why it bugs me is because all of our brothers and sisters over at DuckDuck Bing. Can't find the site. You got a little heads up on that. Like, let me know. I'd consider it a favor. That's all I got going on this week. Outside also, of like, also, also how, how, Bing team, how are you doing? Are you all right? Have they been feeding you enough after they've <laughs> locked you in the basement? <laughs> What's going on with you, man? It's been a pretty dull week. I've just been dog dull sitting. Week? Yeah, uh, dog sitting. So most, most, mostly just taking old men out. <sighs> my, my. Really, uh, the somebody you, clip you, that. You, I need that. Yeah, just taking the, old men out. Just taking the old men out. Yeah. Um, the uh, the nosy neighbors are back. They're filing more complaints with the city. So, what? Yeah. They don't even live in your neighborhood, right? They they don't they don't. I I gotta like actually set up some security cameras and catch this shit because like this is ridiculous. What are, are they just like targeting you or is it? I have no idea because like they don't tell you who um they don't tell you like who's filing the complaints or whatever they just like send out someone from the city yeah but but like i i, I, don't, I don't know like it, it can't be like multiple people because like 
the only the only people who could see that stuff are our direct neighbors who really should have just talked to us in the first place if they had that big of a problem with it have you like went over there and like meet space to knock knock be like hey is anybody like yeah. filing reports like because like if you guys got a problem with it, like that's how i'd phrase it if you got a problem with anything just like let me know and i'll, I'll make sure it gets taken yeah care of. i well i i see i i that's probably that is probably the next step but i'm pretty sure it's just an old lady it was an old man but i think he died because he doesn't show up anymore damn you yes. thor i mean thank you thor <laughs> thank you zeus uh turned him into a swan yes uh but uh yeah so i don't, I don't, I don't know it's just weird weird dumb shit the, peril, the 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 joys of home ownership, dealing with insane people who don't even live in your on your street. Oh, I did do another thing. Oh. I did. Uh, I I got a forever mouse now. Oh, oh! I, I even like really cleaned it, dude. I did a tear down. I did a V fix it for this little fucker. If you're ever worried about a micro switch going out on you, and you happen to have the Elcom huge, you can stop it from becoming e waste and replace the really cheap. D2FC micro switch with one from Japan, and it'll last you probably till the rest of your natural life. D2C to D2F? D2F 01F. Uh, you can get a four pack of them for like seven bucks, which doesn't sound too bad. Do you realize that you could probably get like, I don't know, eight kilos of the for, one for from the China? same amount of money? Yeah. Yeah. You know, they don't uh, even sell uh, them. economies of scale, <laughs> right? <sighs> yeah, I, I want five of them. 5,000 a week, you mean? No. Five. I don't even mind that so much. When I order stuff from like DigiKey and Mauser, though, like price for <laughs> per 1,000, which is like 62 cents or something like that, is like price for one, $3. I'm like, man. Yeah. Man. I wish we could order horses like that. I mean, you can order bulk horse, but the quality just isn't there. We did one time, and what we got is the steam. Kind of, all right. Yeah, sort of, sure. kind of. Uh, all right, I was making sure I get the delay off. Good news, everybody. In the Steam segment, first time for everything, and that's Steam, Valve, that company, banning hardware. I don't think this has ever happened before. I really don't. And it's all about the snap tapas Razer's latest gaming keyboard. has a feature edit that's banned in CS2. 100%. Uh, and, uh, of course, isn't that right, Strong? I'm going to hit you again. Hang on. Ah, you liked it, didn't you? <laughs> That's a straw? That's a very loud straw. Uh, my straw stainless steel. I can uh, stab people with it. It's home defense straw. Yeah. But can you suck their brains out? Or is it, is it not wide enough? You need I got the, the other one need, for that one. You, you need the boba straw yeah, for that. You do. So check this out. Snap Tapa. What is it? Had to look it up. I don't keep track of this stuff. I don't really play a lot of FPSs, but it makes sense. So if you press and continue holding a key, like left or right, then it's enough to just... Press and release the opposite key, and it's going to snap to the other direction, which is not what a keyboard normally does. And uh, it's not quite aim lock, but like watching a video demonstration of it, I'm like, I get it. I get it because you're running, you're like, shooty, 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 pew, pew, instant snap, pew, boom, cap you. And uh, it's not just Razer, it's Razer and Wooting, which mm -hmm. I didn't know there was a keyboard manufacturer called Wooting. Yeah, I think we, we've we've talked about them a few times, but they yeah they make like specialty keyboards and junk, and like yeah it, it see it seems really minor, but yeah the whole uh, pressing the right button in the right time in response to the right external stimuli is kind of the crux of competitive uh, first person shooting and fighting games for that matter. Um, but there there's there's a bit of a gray area here because like um, jump jump throw this is this is a thing I learned about. Uh, if you're a CS:GO player, you're probably more familiar with it, but basically. You can um, throw a grenade a lot further if you jump and throw it at the same time, but the timing on that is very, very uh, specific. So uh, the CSGO allows you to set up a macro to do that within the game proper. Um, before it used to have to be a script, but now it has support. But this is kind of the same thing in a little in 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 some way uh, because again, if if the whole point is you know. And, and I do this all the time in first person shooters where it's like, I'm strafing the side, I need to change directions and I'm still holding on to left and I hit right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get killed because I need to actually let go. I'm bad at, I'm bad at games, turns out. Um, but, um, but yeah, like uh, do, doing, shouldn't you also require that if you want to like 
more furtherly throw a grenade? Sh or should you modify the game so that you just throw the grenade to that distance and bypass the need for such a thing in the first place? I don't yeah, know. It's, it's, at, the, at the end of the day, this just doesn't pass the uh, smells like macro test. Mm -hmm. And dude, I really appreciate like Razor has the most boss excuse for this. You know, because they clearly intentionally put this in to sell keyboards because you're running out of stuff to do. It's like the monitor manufacturers that are putting in the AI stuff yeah. built into the monitor. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Racer says it's cool, bro, because the feature's turned off by default. Oh, yeah. Why well, you got a problem with us all of a sudden? It's like we didn't cut it on. You got to toggle a switch in the settings. And, and, and you, can, you can disable it at any time. Yeah. So, you can, so you can turn it on, only on and off when you really need it. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Like, it's not going to affect either of us. But if you're out there, like, well, like I, I think, like, especially because with like competitive Counter Strike, there's like actual money on the line, right? Like, yeah. And if if we're, if we're going to maintain the illusion that this is some kind of meritocracy where like people's actual skills of the game determine their financial standing, then yeah, yeah, absolutely, something like this should be put in place. I mean, you're still going to get beat by some dude playing on a. 1024 by 768 laptop from oh, yeah. 13 years ago. Yeah, you're you're you're, st you're, you're and a touchpad. You're st yeah, yeah, you're still you're still getting killed by like 13 year olds who are just better than you. But like you know, they're they're also cheating. So you got to cheat harder, right? Hey man, at least now we'll know whether or not they were cheating on a Steam Deck. This is true. Uh, we were. Uh, we They've, they've, they've been adding uh, new and improved in, uh, review enhancements for the past couple weeks. Uh, this new one is trickling in. And uh, you can see uh, this, this is uh, the main story is from uh, a post on our Steam Deck, but someone posted uh, a review, not theirs, and it says, oh, this person spent most of their time playing this game on the Steam Deck. And it, you know, that, that, that's a good thing. Uh, as, as a review data point, it's probably good to know what platform they're playing, on, playing it on. And like, uh, specifically for the Steam Deck, because there's the compatibility, there, there, there's like a two axes of compatibility, right? There's the actual Proton compatibility and there's whether or not, you know, the game will actually run well on the laptop hardware that the Steam Deck has. So, uh, yeah, so as, especially as Steam Decks become more and more proliferated throughout the gaming community, uh, it makes sense when people are posting their reviews to ID, ID that specifically. We did, one, one interesting point about this, uh, and Sand, Sandland does look kind of cool. It's a, that Akira Toriyama game. We were talking a couple weeks ago about Proton games having listed Linux compatibility but um, uh, even even though even though they're not like Linux native games and like for the most part, people who are playing on the Steam Deck probably don't care about that. So are we going to start seeing like a separate Steam Deck requirement, separate Steam Deck support and it sort of like being it's considered its own thing if slash when it becomes the dominant distro? Something to think about. It's going to become the only supported operating system for Valve. One day. Yes, that's it. What, 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 once Gabe replaces his head with the robot head and he em yeah. embraces his final form. Dude, I'm happy to see something like that, man. Uh, you know, if you do spend all of your time playing on the Steam Deck, at least, uh, you know, you can look at it. It's going to narc on you, uh, which is good if you like, I, you need to know things like that. And mm -hmm. I was like, hey, think about it like this, though. Could you possibly make one for the reviews from people who don't meet the minimum game requirements? I, I don't think there's a developer in the world that would mind you doing that. This thing runs like crap on my 4090, da da da, system specs do not make, like, right, uh-huh. Yeah, no, that, 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 could, that, could that could be an enhancement. Like, yeah, we, we have access to your PC specs. We know that you're playing this on, like, the, 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 like most of the time was played on system XYZ, or, like, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe don't necessarily narc on the specific hardware that people have, but maybe, like, group it into chunks or something, so you can be like, this is low, a classified low-performing CPU, classified, like, mid-performing GPU Well, or I wouldn't something. say I you would have to, like, narc on it directly, like, call them out particularly, it would just be a, say, uh, system did not meet... Sure, yeah, yeah, some, some, something to that effect, yeah. Yeah, minimum system requirements, and, like, just that helps you when you're reading, you know, as the customer reading the review... The person saying oh, I was laggy, I had a horrible time, and loads took forever, and it's like, oh, system, all right, well, okay. I, and I guess that also does encourage uh, developers to like put proper system requirements in their games. It uh, would, and even if you have a system that does not meet minimum system requirements, that's something that is also a helpful lens for you to look at. You're like, all right, how bad are the loads? And well, yeah, because because it, it may be that like the game runs perfectly fine on below the system recommended right. system requirements. 
they, they they just ballparked something and it's like no you know if you have a weak computer you can absolutely that's not all about name and shame uh i'd yeah. love to see a feature like that and yeah that is helpful because if you're playing games on steam deck you know we are i think everybody listening and watching this show is looking at the steam deck through the lens of like that's my portable computer as opposed to no I, this, this is my game just, console yeah it's a game like, console this is like my, my this is my chunky switch it's no. my it's my sega game gear my game gear <laughs> All right, let's talk about three new games. Big surprise announcement today. I don't oh my know god, why. Half-Life 3 confirmed! Prepare yourselves. Deadlock has officially got a page. The worst kept secret over at Valve, uh, to the point where we all have copies and we've all played it, is uh, Deadlock has a Steam Store page and fuck nothing on it at all. Plan release date. TBA. To be announced. Early development build. No system requirements. Yeah, that's all we got. Just out of nowhere, 60, they decided 64 to 64-bit only. This. Don't, don't try and run this on your uh, Risk V system. Uh, 21 of my friends currently have it. Uh, one friend wants this game. Who wants the game? I don't know you. Too bad. Good luck. Killing vodka. Yeah. No Vodak for you. So, looking at this page, though, Jordan. <laughs> Let's just come I'm, back. I'm a little disappointed by that placeholder art. I would have, like, I would have liked... Something a little more flashy, like a, like a cool logo or something. I don't something know. That, like, like, captures but, the imagination. Dude, I, dude, this, like, I love this character in the right corner. Like, I'm down with, like, whatever she's selling. Mm, yeah. But to the page itself, it's just got a video. No screenshots. There's, like, a teaser video. And this could be, only be described as, like, the most zero fucks given announcement with a magic yeah. page. And I don't even think, you hypocrites, you lovable scoundrels at Valve, this meets your own requirements for a Steam Store page. Yeah, but, you know, they fucking run the store so they can do whatever they want, we right? We do whatever we want. Yeah. What you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, Report we, we us run, to us? Yeah, we run yeah, the we, house. We've investigated ourselves and found ourselves at us. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's big. We're gonna report you to the manager. Bitch, I am the manager. <sighs> Up next, uh, not Ratchet and Clank. No, Runa and the Chakuru Legacy. Um, it is a Godot game on, uh, that's done in 3D. It's no, no, this is, no, this is gonna be Godot. It's in 3D. It, it is. The new, new Godot can Audio do Audio doesn't work on Linux, and Godot doesn't know how to make... You can't do? No. Mm, impossible. Yeah. Nope. Im so, so someone Jeff Gold Goldblum their way into it. Uh, yeah, it is uh, a game in it's the style like of like your... It. Yeah. Ukulele, Jack and Daxter, 3D action platformers. Yeah, I, I, I like me a good 3D action platformer. It's what I grew up on. Uh, and this is, uh, this is available. Um, system requirements say Steam OS 3.0 or bust. So if you're not on a Steam Deck, eat shit and I, but I mean, it's a good, so it'll run on most anything, but yeah, no, this is, this is, this is cool as I, I think this is like one of the first games that we're going to see out of like the, the unity exodus. We were talking about this a little bit in the pre, pre super shows and, but like there was a big migration uh, last year, or I guess earlier this year, whenever, whenever that fucking rig and roll happened, I don't know what time is anymore, um, where people were like dropping Unity and moving to Godot and Unreal because of the paper install pricing debacle that they've been incredibly quiet about in the uh, interim. But yeah, um, a lot of game devs have switched their stuff over to Godot. And yeah, we're, I think we're going to start seeing more and more 3D games coming out. And it's just really cool. No, I mean, something we were talking about in the pre pre super shows, and go back and listen to the full thing if you're a patron. Unity has been like radio silence since they did the wow, we can't believe people would have a problem with us uh, getting royalties Char off. Char charging per install, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and retroactively collecting money. Like, we thought that was a brilliant idea. How, how would, like, what? They were completely caught off guard by that. Just nothing, like, nothing good, nothing bad, just like silence from Unity. So I was maybe, positing, maybe, like, maybe they'll forget. <laughs> yeah, right. That some people are sitting there thinking that, Jordan. I, I know. This they're is, banking this is on real. it. They're counting on it. And they're like, they're going to just... Very, very, very short memories we mm, have. Like, don't worry about it. It's good. And I understand that you got a time sink and investment in learning the Unity engine, but like, that's going to come back around. What I'm wondering is, are, are, are they just going to let it ride to the end of the year? Maybe take 2025 off? Or is 2025 going to be the year of like, round two? Let's come back for this. 2025. We're moving to only support Apple exclusively. <laughs> All right. Fine, let's do it. All right. A game that we've strangely had on Linux since all the way back in the olden times of 2014. That was a couple of years ago. Yeah, a little bit. I, re I remember being like very shocked when it came out. 
We're like, wait, that game? Well, I was shocked, but for the wrong reason. I'm like, of course it's going to be something I don't care about. Lovely. Right. Great. Awesome. But I mean, yay, but uh. I mean, I mean, it's, it's a pretty big game, uh, name. We're talking about Civ. Yeah, not, not I, Civ I, I, 5. I, not the not 2014. Civ no, Civ 7. Mm. Civ 7. And it's going to be coming out in the Februarys of the 11th of 2025. So you get a little bit to wait and get some new stuff in this one, though, man. They're going to mix it up. Something that fans have been wanting from this series for a long, long time. The ability to mix and match your leaders and civilizations when you're building your empires. Basically, build your own civilization toolkit. You can genuinely have Ben fuck-mothering Franklin leading the Roman Empire. That build is incoming. Mix and match. Go crazy. Go ham. Because it's a video game. Let's deal with it. Happy to see it. 2K Praxis. It's going to run on Linux. Linux system specs are already in the bottom. It's like, hey, let's go. Let's do it. Hopefully, hopefully they stay there. We've, we've, we've seen that happen a couple times where they mysteriously disappear. Wait a minute. Are you serious, Sam 4? I thought you were Jordan. Hey. <laughs> Damn it. $69.99. This is going to be one of those $70 deals. And, you know, this is... Uh, that, no, pr- pr- premium purchases, baby. you got to spend the $100 or you're not oh, getting the game. Oh, right? $129 for the Founders Edition, which comes with something. I don't know. They, they, see, again, they don't care. The fan base for this is just going to buy that. They don't care what that comes with. They just know they need it. They're done with it. And um, yeah, everything's TBT, but there it is. Yeah. I've. It, and I'm but, like, we, 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 we had a Civ game recently, right? And it was like, yeah, like eight years ago it came out. Like, yeah. Oh, well, th- th- then it probably makes sense that we have a new Civ game. I, I guess the, the other thing, too, is like, Civ 5 had been out for a while before it released on Linux, and then yeah. Civ 6 came out, and they're like, yeah, and here's the Linux version, too. So we got, like, two Civ games pretty it's close like to back each to other. Back. I think, yeah, so yeah. Like, like 2010 or something like that. Yeah, or like, yeah. yeah. And they're like, hey, we get Civ 5 on Linux, and, like, that's cool. I remember playing it. I have a copy of it. I think, did Feral do it? We got keys. Uh, for it. Yeah, uh, it was uh, Aspire, I believe. Might have been Aspire. All right. And, uh, you know, I played it enough to get a feel for it and be like, no, I'm just, I don't, it's too slow for me. Yeah, I, I got lucky. I had three people, so we did the uh, hot seat three-player game, and that one's pretty fun. That would have been pretty dope. Now, one update. This is not a joke, and it's probably not Half-Life 3 confirmed. No, 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 no. So the, 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 the Valiant people, and this link comes from uh, PC games then, uh, check in them, them Steam, Steam depots, Steam dippers, trying to, trying to find anything newsworthy to talk about. Well, they found something. There have been some rumblings in the Half-Life 2 depot, and uh, yeah, it looked, and so people are speculating what that could possibly be. They did have the Half-Life uh, anniversary uh, thing that came out a couple of years ago, where they added uh, Steam Deck support and they uh, fixed a bunch of stuff. So a lot of the the scuttlebutt or the what people are thinking is that it's probably going to be another one of these for the what, twenty-year anniversary of or fifteen-year anniversary of Half-Life they were. 2. Yeah. They were, uh, and I looked at them, and I'm like, you guys don't keep track of this very well, do you? I don't know. How, how, many, how many years has it been? The, um, what's about to come out, like, an NVIDIA-sanctioned, sponsored uh, game is Half-Life 2 RTX. Ah, oh, right. I, I think, I think we, we talked about it, and then promptly forgot about it, because much like Portal RTX, they were like, that's neat. I don't need to play that. Right. I mean, it looked neat, and it was like a fan project. NVIDIA's already got their claws in it. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, this would be really dope if it had a NVIDIA logo when it started, wasn't it? And, what, what uh, would, I, th- I think what would be absolutely hilarious is if it comes out, and it just comes out with all the scrapped versions of Half-Life 2 Episode 3, so people can look at them and go, oh, oh yeah, they definitely shouldn't have released this. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they were right to push that back. Man, they gotta work on their web zone, dude. Like this is this is manky even by my standards. Like just they they, they need some RTX. They they need some RT something, dude. Like I was trying to show off a video of it. But yeah, I'm almost hundred percent sure. And like to what you're saying, when they did the, we got the Half Life one twenty whatever anniversary and they did some quality of life changes to it. But like they're very minimal. But I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. most of the stuff getting mixed around in the depot right now is for the RTX remix Half Life Two. It's 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 possible, but uh, I think didn't Portal have its like Portal RTX is like a separate thing from Portal, right? It was yes. So what I so I I I don't know. I don't know how they're gonna roll that out. 
to me at least it makes sense that they would like keep it as a separate thing well they given, might have given, okay this could this could this could have been a little saliva swapping they could have been doing yeah. the update to that but they also gotta they want to keep parody update engine wise with the rtx thing now it's it, it's it and it, it's certainly possible yeah like, yeah i don't know would you ever go back and play half i've only played through half-life 2 I, well we did a bunch of half-life 2 multiplayer Yes, uh, you and Pedro did most of it. I showed up for a couple levels, but yeah, uh, uh, and I've been through Half Life Two once. Same. Um, I think I'm good. Yeah. I, I I I might like. I'm not good at the Half Life games. I get killed a lot. It is a lot of mm -hmm. slow slow moving. Yeah, meet uh, AI. Yeah, meet yeah. meet AI. Um. So and like oh, I don't know. The 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 game was good, but physics puzzles. I'm not the biggest fan of physics puzzles, honestly. I get off on them hard. Give like, me a good one. Give me a good brain scratcher. Give me a solid five minutes where I'm sitting there, not moving, just looking, going. I I I, I, sh I should say like I th I think it's like a it's like a you got chocolate in my peanut butter type thing. I don't like physics puzzles in Half Life. If the game is about physics puzzles, mm -hmm. then I'm down. But if it's like if it's the physics puzzle is gating my progression in my shooter. I I don't mind it, man. I mean, then again, I say this as a person who's like probably spent. I probably got like a good six hours of uh, Just Cause 3 in this week, which is a ton of gaming for me if you keep track of my public Steam profile. Um, and I, I found out what that game is. Oh? Yeah, it's a cozy game for dudes. Hmm. Just, it's like Stardew Valley, but... Yeah, it's, it's a cozy game for like just Chaos Engine people. Like, yeah, I just want to wreck stuff and like have a smattering of a lot on it. Half-Life 2, I never minded... Like, I... In Enjoyed now. Half Life Two is probably the most extreme example because Valve was really proud of what they pulled off with that engine, and they yeah. really made it a point to put it in your face through the entire game. Mm -hmm. But it was still neat launching a barrel into the orbit. Yeah, then yeah. I don't. I don't know. I just I didn't like the gravity gun. No, just, if I if I had to fight with it, it was like it's fun shooting saw blades. But like, can I just get infinite saw blades, please? Ah. Uh. Can I, can I load my saw blade clip into my gravity gun and then just fire those off? Oh, dude. Why didn't we ever get like a Ravenholm, like Left 4 Dead level? See, that would, that would be a cool idea. Why or like, or, or maybe, or maybe, um, maybe Especially they could do some like could Left play 4 Dead. infected. Or, or you know what? Do some Left 4 Dead cross uh, Deadlock stuff as like a promo. Like, mm. that might. Oh, let me play as a head crab. Right. <laughs> a head crab in Left 4 Dead. Yes. Let's go. I, I mean, it's basically just the jockey, honestly. Yeah. 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 You're, just playing, you're just playing the jockey. Or, I mean, it could be the whole mechanic of, like, you know, it's one shot, one kill with your character, but you can take over other characters. Or, right. Yeah. And yeah. Get yeah, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, you can yeah. see some chaos. Yeah, yeah, there, there's a mechanic there, but like you said, it's in pre-alpha. <laughs> yeah. All right. The big story this week. Talked about it on weekly daily Wednesdays, but I thought we definitely needed to bring it up here since it is about gaming. I still just wanted to do a double gloat on it. Is some fascinating benchmarks for the Ryzen 7 9700X running in Linux on that old Nobra, Hotel Nobra, they call it, not Nobara, from PCGamesHardware.de. Well, they took this and uh, the, what, 9600X, ran it against Windows 11 in gaming, and we had a couple of games show up here, ones that you're familiar with, starting out. With Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Power Liberty. Yeah. Phantom of the Liberty Opera. Uh, 48 volts of Cyberpunk, baby. And after going through this, let's just go ahead and take a look at these benchmarks. Uh, Nobra, let's just, we're just going to say Linux, with a 9700X, which is an 8-core, 16-thread part. They're running the DDRs at 6400. They got a 4080 or 4090 in there too. Yeah. Like, Throw them down. It. Yeah. So, our max frame rate on this is 100 FPS on Linux with Windows 11, 24H2, barely on the board. Barely on the board. Almost not even worth benchmarking at a measly 94.6. Mm. I don't know why they bother putting that on chart. The performance delta is like clearly there. And it's only by like six percentage points. They ran the they ran the test again with a seventy seven hundred X with the similar configuration. Yep. And yeah, the ninety three the FPS compared to eighty nine. The delta is still there, although not as pronounced. We we got a win right here for the old Cybertruck. Let's go to 
the, another classic Red Dead Redemption too. Well, what what what's what's even worse is the seventy seven hundred creams the ninety seven hundred. Yeah, uh, the seventy seven hundred on Linux does actually beat out by two frames <laughs> a second the ninety seven hundred on Linux. So I just want to say, like, fucking Eggy, congratulations to you and your team, man. Well you done. Cur- you curated a fast fucking distro. Con- yeah, like that's. And, and, and again, this, this is just another data point that we can just shove in the Windows users' faces. Right. Now, now we go. Uh, oh, go the next game. Horizon. Horizon Nudge Inter Turbo, Forbidden West. Uh, 130 on Team Linux, 121. Still, still, still on still, Linux. We, weaker like, CPU beats, beats out the better CPU by like two frames a second. It's hilarious. Okay. So I got to keep in mind for audio listeners here. So the. 9700X on Linux, clocking at 130 perps, right? Mm, yeah. Okay. Same CPU on Windows, 11, 119. That's pretty rough. Now, mm-hmm. on the 7700X, doing 121, not that big of a deal. But on Windows 11, that 7700X is barely doing 113. Like, that's wild, man. It is. What about, uh, what's this next game? It's Tsushima. Ghost to Tsushima. I don't care about that one. I mean, it's still one. Yeah. 160 uh, versus 150. Like, we're talking 10% here, man. Easy. Uh, uh, so, so, okay. So, it's, it's looking slightly better for Windows. The 7700 does not outperform the 9700 on Windows, unlike the last two games. Mm-hmm. Little, um, I see Maddie ask a question in uh, Twitch chat. How, uh, how optimized is Nobara enough? Nobara is pretty bleeding edge. Uh, it's got like the latest and greatest everything. It's like compiled with O11. Yes, <laughs> it's like it's like Gentoo back in the nineties. <laughs> so, uh, easy to say. We we went in the that one and uh, what World of Okay, now this is the one they make a point of. It didn't completely dance all over Windows 11's face in this one, but it still beat it. It did. It did by a little bit. Uh, Windows. Came in on top for once. Windows 11 on the 9700X Dyslexia curse you at 164. Linux barely showed up to the party with 160.9. Pretty poor showing for Team Penguin. Uninstall Linux. Install Windows 11. That's it. End of story. (laughs) Uninstall World of Warcraft. Just improve your life in general. Was it the same on the 7700? Uh, yeah, it did. It was a, actually a, a noticeable jump. Uh, uh, World of Warcraft 155 on Windows 11 versus 146 using the uh, mm-hmm. 7700X. Like, that. that's a sizable jump. Oh. And the Geekbench, they have the final numbers there. Yeah, then we but get like- into the regular. See, this is what I thought. When I first read this, I, I saw the headline. I'm like, let's roll some dice. Why? Because, like, oh, yes, I'm sure it beat it in 7-zip, the MATLAB, and, like, right. any AI shit. And they're like, no, we're talking about video game. Like, oh, wait, what? Hey, all right, let's. Yeah. yeah. That's what this is what I wanted to point out because we don't get We're just gloating. This does this is fucking benchmark numbers. And it's, and, a, it's, 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 it's a victory lap. It, it, it is a thing to be like, haha, look at this. Windows runs your fucking games better. Eat shit. We still can't play stuff because of anti cheat, but uh, that's sh- not our fault. How dare you? I am going to go play Splitgate 2 tonight. I'm going to go play Destiny 2. Again. I didn't tell everybody about that. I got uh, access to the uh, Splitgate 2 um, alpha. Mm. And I went to install it. Didn't go so well. Okay. I ran into That's... a problem. Oh? Yeah, I did. If I can, if I can get to my own... Uh... Screenshots folder. <laughs> well, we're not, I'm not, I'm not going to even try it that hard. Um, here we go. The... Uh... Splitgate 2 alpha playtest on Linux was met with a resounding anti-cheat error. Ah. Womp womp. Which is bonus frustrating since the original one was a Linux native build. This is a Proton game. You had to play yes. through Proton. It, 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 was, uh, it was Unity, the original one. So. Yeah. And it just... It ran, it ran great. It was, it was the, 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 again, proof that you can make a good performing Unity game under Linux. It is possible. Yeah. So, and yeah, what Jordan said, like Geekbench and all the other stuff, like Linux does its thing. But my question is, is has Linux just gotten that good or is Windows 11 
24H2 just that bad with AMD CPUs? I think, I, I think it's, why, why not both? I think Linux has definitely gotten a lot faster. Our driver situation has gotten a lot better. We get DXVK. Uh, we, we have DXVK. We have, um, we, we have a bunch of stuff that allows us to bypass a lot of shitty Windows architecture decisions. Um, like, uh, look at the Elden Ring thing where, um, it was, uh, fuck, um, I, I, I forget, shader I forget cache. The, what, what, it, what, some, something about the shader cache, but it, 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 it was something about, was it? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, either, either, overthink there, it there, harder. There, I dare you. There, no, there, there was, there was some instruction thing on the motherboards, uh, that was also causing an issue that they bypassed that in uh, proton. But, uh, either, either way, the, po the point is we, we, we have ways of getting around architectural issues within windows. Um, and then, yeah, like, look at all the, all the telemetry, all the AI shit, all of the, the user account framework stuff on windows, just slow bogs it down and bogs it down and bogs it down. It's gotta be constantly connected to the internet. You gotta like phone home to Microsoft to, if you want to like spawn a new process or whatever, I don't fucking know. I mean, what uh, is it at this point? Where's the advantage? This is the thing that's constantly, like I said, we're just having fun, having a glow thing. Personally, Jordan and I don't give a singular fuck what operating system you run. We're not going to fight you over it. You can still come over, hang out with us. We'll play Sonic the Hedgehog. It'll be dope. But 30 years, 30 years of hearing, well, I got to play my games, bro. got to play my games. And how the turns have tabled with this of like, oh, yeah, yeah well, you probably want to put Linux on if you want to get the most performance out of your new AMD CPU. I'm like, ah, oh, uh, and... Or, or the, the handheld situation, like, oh, yeah, you can buy all these Windows handhelds, but they suck. By the way, I the find Linux myself one. perplexed in the old school meaning of the word when somebody just can't say, I don't want to run Linux. You know, is, is it an ego thing? Is this something you think you can't figure out? Or do you just genuinely don't? Because there's never the, I, when somebody's like, I ain't got time to mess around with all that. And I'm like, cool. It's the, I'm going to run Linux if, and this comes out and that happens. And then they're going to bring up Photoshop. Even they, they don't have a fucking clue what Photoshop is. They've never opened it in their life. They're like, well, I got, you know, you need the Photoshop. And it's been the gaming for so long to see this and to see the progress we've made in the 10 years, you know, even 10 years ago, gaming on Linux was rough. It was world of goop. A couple of humble, humble titles. It's like you could fuck around and wine, get some stuff up and running. DX11, forget about it. Just let those games go. Those didn't exist on Linux. Um, and here we are. Good job, everybody involved. Even though we had nothing to do with it, still. Give, give ourselves a good old yeah. pat on the back. Round we did of it, applause Linux for you. It, listen, it's the Linux community. That way we can all take credit, right? We did it, Reddit. Yes. We did it, Linux. Uh, all right. But uh, you know, accessibility is an important thing in games. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you want people to be able to play your games, and sometimes they lack the physical ability to do so. Uh, and, you know, in, in their attempt to balance the karmic scales for just the, the, the epic awfulness that is just the story of Microsoft, uh, they've been working really hard um, on Xbox accessibility to, make, uh, to help and make controllers that enable people uh, of all physical abilities to play video games. Uh, they've introduced an adaptive joystick now that has a bunch of 3D printable heads uh, for joysticks, so for people who need to use their chins, or for people with gripping problems, or uh, manual dexterity issues, uh, there are now a number of modifications you can make to these controllers that allow you to play them. Uh, and uh, there's there's a couple being supported right now. There's the 8-bit Doe Lite, uh, and then there is the BioWave Proteus, uh, which Ven will get into a little bit more. Uh, they've added some toggle hold features as well. Uh, to this. And what's really, really cool about this is because XPad is pretty standardized. Um, and this is all just being done via a regular Xbox controller in the Xbox driver standard. SDL doesn't need to do any work to emulate these. That which is means a brutal that... scroll you guys got going on. This is one click. Oof. Oof. I, as you were. But yeah, like, um, but yeah, uh, this requires like zero effort for developers to uh, have to support. So it, and because it's 3D printable, uh, the STLs are available. You can make peripherals that are better for your specific use case. I think this is like a, a winning move all around. Where it's at. Two turntables and a mic. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I like big buttons. Cannot lie. No, this is, this has got my attention. This really does. Why? Well, man, dude, 
this bro <laughs> bio wave. I want to always want to call it the bro wave. Proteus. It, this thing looks neat, neat as hell, dude. It's like the little cubes that you stick together and, you know, you can make a machine out of them and do different things, but you can swap around the modules. You can put things wherever you want. You want this, uh, you want your D-pad over here. You just click it out and you click back into a different location. Like you're good to go. You want your analog stick. You want two analog sticks. All right. Click, click, click Lego. You're good to go. However, what I need to know is whether or not it passes the floor test. If you're old enough, you know what happened when you dropped your mobile phone, your razor on the floor. Battery went one way, back went the other way, phone went the opposite of those two. That looks like what this is going to happen here. He's like, damn it, my D-pad is under the stove again. What do I do? Yeah, yeah I, I, I really hope the locking mechanism on this is like very good. Bru well, it can't be too brutal considering like... Yeah, it's, it, it's an accessibility, accessibility thing. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, yeah. Do they, maybe they'll come up with like a get wrecked edition of those that are like neodymium, like break your finger off, like clank. Yeah, you just you you put it in the bay, and then it no, it's it's nanotech, right? It just disassembles, and then yeah. But yeah, that controller is pretty dope. A bunch of options. All the, all this is going to be in our show notes, and like more options are great. And the eight bit do thing looks pretty dope. I know Pedro mm -hmm. was like, hey, yeah, that looks cool. He liked the button configuration, like having the shoulder buttons and everything on the face. Um, I have a friend who, um, recently had a hand amputated. They're playing mm -hmm. Street Fighter with a foot pedal. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I've seen so, like, chin controllers and somebody, if you follow him, Ben Hack, Ben Hack has been making uh, modified controllers for people with, uh, issues like he puts like the D pad under so you can control the D pad mm -hmm. by setting it on your leg. Yeah. Under uh, the I there, there, there was a really cool one a couple of years ago where like the guy was like he could barely move anything but his thumbs and they had like a like an IR keyboard that they could get him to use to play uh, World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. So like all, 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 all this sorts of all this sort of technology is really cool. The fact and again, the fact that like they're making all the stencil files available and they're yeah. trying to make this as like open source as possible is just a, a great move. There is. Yeah, if you got to like somebody at Microsoft, like I said, Microsoft is big, big enough to where there's parts of Microsoft that generally are trying to do good. Um, you, you can't, like, have an initiative like this at an, in, at any point try to, like, drop the second shoe. It doesn't work. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're stuck with it, and that's a good thing, and we can all benefit from it. Because uh, any company making stuff like this, not necessarily because they're evil. Like, they're going to... Microsoft's big enough to where they can get these out, and you can print them out at home. But they're so low run that the higher prices... That's why Ben Heck has been, you know, if you ever, from what was it, like Element something YouTube channel from way back in the day, he made like Element portable, 14 or whatever. Something like that. Yeah. He, old school maker from like 10, 12, 13 years ago. And he's able to make these things. That's why he got into it because the like custom ones were like super crazy expensive. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I can 3D print these things and kind of modify them at a reasonable price. And like, so people can play games. So it's good Microsoft's getting into that. All right. Yeah. Sure. Let me give you something that's going to haunt your dreams. It's going to terrify you, petrify you, stupefy you. Just nothing but nightmares. We're talking about VTubin. Tubin. Tubin, man. That's what all the kids are. This video doesn't play, which is amazing. How the fuck did you make a video that doesn't play? It's got a buffer. I don't know. I don't know, dude. Like, it, 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 it is moving. It's moving very slowly. Right? Like, what is going on here? Um, hang on. Playback speed. Can I just download this thing and play it? Uh, I shit you not, this thing's trying to download a text file. You, listen, you gotta you got save the entire website to a file, then. That's how you download videos off of GitHub. Shut up, Lettuce. I want this video to play. Is it playing now? Yes! It All right, is. our nightmare bouncy, can, bouncy. can convince. So bouncy. We're talking about PNG tuber because everybody secretly wants to be a screechy anime human during your live streams on a call on your discord calls and business meetings. That's Four where it's hundred percent your honor. I am not a cat. Now, if you want to pull all that off with, uh, not having to learn and failing miserably like I did to use VTube studio using proton under Linux, uh, you can try this out. This is what it, Pying tuber. Ping ping to pying tuber. Pying tuber. It'll let you pull all that off. It even brings face tracking into the relationship. Just not not if you're on Windows. Linux peeps, we're cool. It works in there. However, um, it does even support Twitch integration, has MIDI events, web sockets. 
You name it. A lot of stuff that I found uh, inadvertently while digging around in VTube Studio trying to figure out how to get the uh, soft drink to talk, and it didn't happen. Now, I didn't get... Oh, dude, I went to war with this thing. You ever just run into this, Jordan Swung, where you're just like, I'm going to make you work before the end of the day. Like, yes, it's completely yeah. unreasonable. I'm not going to need anything out of this. No one's going to care about this, but I'm going to win here. Yep, I've, I've, I've definitely been there. Been and uh, of those. I got into a battle with this. I downloaded it, went to start it up. Nice binary ready to go and it spits out or it's like nope your glibc is too old i'm like what would not upgrading that what are our options i'm like i've been meaning to try out distro box so i got into that game i went to start digging around with it and uh, i actually got it to load up using nvidia accelerated running fedora 40 through distro box and it even was moving around and being all horrifying like it is on screen right now but i couldn't get the audio work which is unfortunate and this is a little like you can build your models like in the application itself you can adjust the eyes and the hair and all that you know it's like you know build a bear type stuff which i didn't see immediately in vtube studio which fair enough I, I didn't dig hard enough but it looks like it's got a ton of really cool features in there um but i couldn't get the audio working jordan uh, you tried it out on old feet are you on feet or 40 yet i am on feet or 40 um, yeah, so I tried it on uh, Fedora 40 on uh, my laptop, and just because that one has uh, PipeWire on it, and um, wasn't wasn't having it. Said, oh well, maybe maybe it's a PipeWire problem. Maybe I'll I'll go over to this machine that is running Pulse, and it saw my webcam microphone for a split second, and then it didn't anymore. Uh, but you know, assuming you can get the audio working, like yeah, it's it's simple enough if you want to do basic PNG tuber stuff. I I learned recently that like fancy VTube rigs are like iPhone specific because of their face tracking. But mind you, everything I know about VTubing comes from Takahata 101 from the TFS uh, commentary tracks and uh, that one episode of Geek Enders where they were all VTubers. Uh, so take everything I say with a boulder of rock salt. But, you know, most people uh, who it's want to get GIF into- support, damn it. It does. You can have animated GIFs in, the, uh, in your little PNG tuber. So it's a GIF tube. I don't how, know. How many uh, talking states do we get? We have three. Uh, oh, we shit. have- we have not talking, talking and screaming, just just like me. <laughs> that, that, that's me. I, that's what I do. Um, and yeah, like um, if you're just starting out, if you just want to like have an avatar, uh, protect your identity, or just like play a character on a stream, because sometimes it's fun to be someone who isn't you and just role play. Um, yeah, this is this is a neat way of going about it with a pretty low barrier for entry. It is, uh, unless you're on Debian twelve. So, uh, I I I mean. You, are, are, are the kids they're all running debian these days they right? better be man they're like why would you run that it's like it's production studio you'll learn about it when you're older uh ups first time use credit their release pains this is the first time they've ever uh, packaged a program for release so if you get any problems with it it's a linux executable you download it you know you rename it to .exe and you double click on it or maybe you, I, actually i don't even think you had to ch modded it was had proper permissions you download it Run it from the directory, it pops right up. Didn't have a problem with it. Uh, it's available for Windows and, of course, uh, source code. I, actually, I, we, 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 should, we should applaud this, actually, because it does ship in a zip file yep. that has a proper execute permission set. It does. Like, like that, that is, like, well above and beyond, like, uni a lot of Unity games on itch. Um, I'm going to keep this in mind just because, you know, eventually, you know, in the next decade or so, when Debian 13 comes out, and I have a newer version of GLibc. Uh, this this is something I want in my arsenal. It is. This is something I wouldn't mind being. I. It is something that could be turned into like an OBS plugin because the the neither one of us are terribly into like we don't have any desire to be like the screechy enemy things or a talking can, but that does open the door up for um, shenanigans. Yes. For other stuff. Oh. Or you know. Uh, I, like the, the the immediate thing that comes to mind is if we have a guest without a webcam, we can just like <laughs> make them a virtual body that they're gonna regret. All I'm saying is this: if somebody will give me uh, somebody wants to art up a nice uh, 3D model of a floating jacket, very similar to one worn by, let's say, I don't know, Jensen Wong, send it my way. Maybe we might be able to interview it on the show. I think that might be fun. Maybe. I don't Maybe. know. I, 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 was, I, was thinking, I, I was thinking of Frank, like be an F tuber. Frank tuber. Frank tuber, yeah. Frank again time for this anime bullshit. Frank is anime bullshit. What are you talking about? Man, he's gonna bite you. 
Yeah, it's gonna go ooh. ooh. <laughs> Get, gets to some skeleton cat ears. Fucking yes. For, the, 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 whole, the holes in Frank's skulls are actually just anime eyes, right? That's what I'm gonna get for Halloween. Frank's gonna want a human mask. Yeah, I just put some anime mask. eyes. Yeah. yeah, dude, it'll be terrifying. Oh, I saw one of those, man. Uh, walking around. Uh, the, that's how you know fall is here. The Christmas, not Christmas, I call them Christmas stores. The Halloween stores are uh, opening up in empty Spirit buildings. Halloween yes. or whatever. Yeah. Which is great. Refresh decorations for the house for the year. Uh, all right. That's going to do us for this show. If you like what we do, you want to help us out, give us some wet, sticky cash. You want to make this penguin happy? Yeah, look at this penguin. Watch it. Burp. Hey! It's a P-tuber. It, yeah, that, that's our ping tuber. It's only got two modes. Uh, fuck you and pay me. Uh, LinuxGameCast.com. We got a support tab. We got Patreon. We got LibraPay, PayPal, Bitcoin, Amazon wishlist. If you want to pick us up something, we got a merch store. Hey, you want to get something? We got some, you know, we got our faces on it. We got words and stuff. We even got stickers. Decent quality stuff, all stuff that I've designed. Amazon storefront. If you're curious about anything in the studio, itemized list, you don't have to buy it on Amazon. And of course, Humble Affiliate. As one of our awesome patrons, not only do you get your name in the credits, that's just step one. You get this pre pre super shows and we talk about each and every week, which is our production meeting. Don't even try to pretend I can tell you what that's about. You get to experience yourself. And you can't make the live show, you want that live experience, and you want it the next day in podcast format, and you want the video the next day, we got that for you, too. If you're an executive producer, you even get a video version as we're streaming it live. It is there, plus access to our Discord, and the bonus sodas keep coming. Access to the Discord, I, what I already said that, what was I going for? Show notes! Senior yes. moment. Deal with it. Show notes. RSVP to some game streams. We do we do, do those on uh, do. Tuesdays and Fridays, and occasionally Thursdays when I'm playing a multiplayer game. There we go. Yeah. Thank you for your support. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Make it happen. Come say hi. Uh, if you get any questions about anything like hardware, software, video related, Linux related that you've been doing, you don't want to get fucking torn the fuck up and trolled the fuck out on Reddit. Ask them in like an R Linux or someplace like that. Head over to the Interfacing Linux forums. I'll help you out. Guaranteed. I'm there every day. Do it. Beautiful. All right, Penguin. You got to go away. You've been chilling too hard. No, we got we to thank Don M for... Oh, I guess we got to thank him for the 100 bits he just sent us. Well, you so, better. Yeah. We, we got to thank Sandro for the 1,000 bits. Ooh, Sandro. On Tuesday. Because, oh, another bonus you get if you're a Twitch sub, if you're a patron. Dude, we play Trackmania. We got a Trackmania server on Tuesdays and Fridays. Quit your bitch and you're like, I can't find any friends to come hang out with. If you like physics puzzles, you like platforming, you like racing, you just like hanging out with some nerds, come do it. We're there. Great time. Great community. Got a good schedule. Love to have you. Yeah. Sandy Martin. Sandra, you know him, you love him. Thank you for those thousand bits. Thank you, Don, for the 100 as well. Are we good? Did we cue the music and roll the credits? I think we got a we got a hate mail. We got to talk about some uh, some extreme mice, don't we? Oh, that's right. We talked about gerbils last week, didn't we? We did. And uh, Jeff Hefe writes in, says, um, and I guess if if you, if you want to do that uh, contact page, send us an email through that, um, or send us a message on Patreon, YouTube comments. Uh, Patreon's probably the best way to YouTube do it. YouTube comments are yes. Patreon, if you don't want them, all right. If you're gonna leave a message on the Patreon, it'll be like, I don't want you to put this on the show because we'll put it on the show. You leave a YouTube comment, there's a good chance we're going to get back to you one way or the other. You send it in, email, there's no reply address. Why? Because you're sending in something for the show. We're not going to write you back from it, but make sure everybody gets a copy of it. There. We good? Yeah, Bam. yeah. Sounds good. But Hefe, speaking of uh, Sensen, says, I much prefer my Atari Centipede arcade machine replacement trackball with USB board over any mouse for gaming, but I guess I'm weird like that. All right. What so, were we talking so about mouses last week in Dribbles? Uh, I think you, you were talking about replacing the micro switch at one point we were talking about, uh, deadlock and like, uh, you, I think, I think the topic was like, you were playing a sniper and like, right. you were giving, yeah, I with think a that's, trackball, that's that, which is going right. to be horrible. Like, yes, instantly pick the worst possible combination. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, people still play like that. Are you picky about it? Do you like, do you have any preferences with your input devices? And you know, this comes from the YouTube comment and I'm like, oh, okay. Because that's a lot to take in, right? Atari Centipede Arcade Machine Replacement Trackball with USB Board. Oh, uh, 
there's a lot to think about. There's a lot to yeah, visualize. What, and what here's would that look yeah, like? I don't know, dude. I was like, you really should have followed that up with something. And of course he did. There it is. That's exactly <laughs> what an Atari centipede trackball with buttons and shit. With a USB board would look like, yeah. Yeah. Well That's done. All right. Go back and watch the video version. It's right here at the end. There's timestamps. I'll probably put a note on it. The, um, the, the, the link to the tweets in the show notes, too, if you want to take a look at that there. It is decidedly pank. Uh, and it is the trackball from the Atari machine plus three big arcade switches up top for left click, middle click, and get clicked. Pretty dope. Yeah. I don't know. Scroll, scroll, scrolling would be a little weird. You got to hold down the middle button and like use your hand, the other hand or something. I don't know. Well, I mean, the way I got this one programmed is like if I hold down the third switch, mm -hmm. which you normally don't use, it turns the uh, trackball into a 3D uh, scroll wheel. That's the, that's that's usually how like most mice do that with the with the scrolling, right? Um, with a trackball. Yeah, or uh, at least at least with uh, mi with uh, middle click, uh, middle click turns it into. Oh, uh, you guys are stuck with up and down, dude. I got this thing's 3D. I can go all under all circles. This one, this one can also do left and right. Because it's fancy mouse. But yeah. Oh, well you wait! It scrolls left and right. Yeah, it scrolls left and right. If I if I nudge the mouse wheel. Oh no no right. no! Like scrolls, not nudge. Yeah, yeah. Roll. Can you draw a perfect what? circle with it? Only in one direction, <laughs> only one dimension, because it's a wheel. <laughs> um. Yeah, I thought I I would never be able to give up clicky scroll wheel. Mm. Until I discovered uh, how to reprogram this and like make it do the thing. There's this guide over on Linux Gamecast about how to. And I'm like, this is how you really live, man. So that's brilliant, Jeff. Pretty dope. That's probably more involved than I'll ever get to. But I highly recommend not throwing away your dribbles, doing a little bit of research. Doesn't matter what you have. An IntelliMouse from 1999. You're not going to need to fix anything on that because that micro switch is still going to outlive you. Create yourself a forever mouse. Like these things shouldn't wear out. These are not, the input devices are not disposable. There's stuff from like the fucking six. I'm sure the original mouse still works, dude. The, the one Xerox dude, one, man. yeah. Yeah. Probably still clicking away, dude. Still pisses me off, man. You, you, what, you need an ISA to PS2 to USB to Thunderbolt adapter <laughs> for whatever, that shit? whatever, right? Yeah. Apple probably makes it. Between Apple and Starforge, uh, not Starforge, it's, Apple and... Uh, StarTech, yeah. StarTech. Anything's possible, baby. Um, I'd be willing to pay. I'd love to see a premium mouse, like a well-built mouse. Yeah. And I mean, like, a, a legitimate, well, and what I mean is, like, quality parts, not... RGB bullshit and weights and like spoilers and shit. No, uh, uh, give me something made out of like a D give me a fucking metal ass mouse with like good well, buttons. Yeah, if, if you have a metal mouse, you don't need the weights, right? Like the whole point of the weights is to weigh it down because they're cheap right. plastic. Right. Like, don't give me the cheapest, thinnest ass. Give me some thick, chunky ass old school plastic and, uh, like really good micro switches and I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. And I'm, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to, like spin like a bio like a razor mouse or whatever that blinks and stuff. No, it can happen. There you go. All right, link to everything in the show notes. Thanks for hanging out with us. I was going to say we did an abridged version, but I just looked at the record clock and I'm like one hour exactly because fuck we, us, we, we're programmed. We fill time, right? <laughs> yeah. Like I don't run a clock on this show. I was just like, nope, we're going to do an hour long show no matter what. So let's go ahead and. Cue that music. You can always find us uh, right here. Eight-ish. We try to start at eight. We're, we're still not really good at remembering that we start at eight instead of 8.30 now. So it's like 8.05, 8.10 sometimes. But it's right, it's some buffer room. Yeah, yeah. We, we, best effort. If you're a Death Note or above, you could be in the pre-pre-super shows and listening to us and be like, hey, dumbasses, get live on Twitch. But we are on twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. Get a hold of me. I'm on X at Vinstone and uh mass.linuxgamecast.com uh just at vin if you want to get the if you want to toot at me it'll be hot i am not adapted to my scenarios so i need to get a ps2 to jordan adapter i guess i don't know where i'm going with that follow me on uh twitter at the burning fool on mastodon at frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com or on bsky at frojo at bsky.app still he's not yeah I, like I said, I, I mean, follow I a lot. I post of... like our show stuff on it, but like I've had I've... like two. Jeff, wait, is it Jeff? I don't know. The one guy, one guy like is like really cool guy. He always like hearts the shit I post, and he's a regular person that I know from like the social media. I don't think we've ever talked, but I'm like, thanks, man. 
I follow a lot of like artists and comic people. They're all they're all on B Sky. Cool, man. All right, yeah. let's roll some credits. Yes. Oh, so much bacteria here, baby. Let me swap some bacteria with you. <laughs> well, at least <laughs> at least it's not darkness this time. We got to thank our advisors, our Theron, our executive producers, one, two, three, four, Ian, Ishep Kraducky, uh, drummer, the Tacos, Barbara, M. Scott, Padomic. Mike and our little, our little Chicago hands. Turbo Glorious Egg Roll Puzzle Empty and Cosiclism. The Sea Monsters, Dancing Joe, John, Dirty Dean, Angel, Dementor, System T, RL, Ryder X, Bacchina, Nemo, Veranuda, Treddy, and Mike. Plenty of death more moats. Yes, Redsky, Mark, uh, Terra Oil of Hope, Benjamin, Nova, Chad, Romero, Nubbin, Turnover, Martin, no, come back, Kim, Scam to Steve, and a bunch of chairlings. Uh, look at all, look at Mike all these chairlings. Mike um, and and bike me Craig. and our Libra players someone Sandy, Sandy and Shoddy yeah baby see I know who they are now I like went over to Libra Pro Bay and I look and they've got like a little badge now that says hey we these are the people that support you not these random bullshit strings of numbers ah you're able to pick out an icon or two they, they have they yes I was like good job Libra Pay. love to see it all right, beautiful people, uh, get out there. Go play some Deadlock. Report back, and um, yeah, don't die. Shut up. Die in a fire. Lock. LGC cares. Five dudes. <laughs>